Hello and welcome. My name is Ajax Post and we're here in the second of my little Transport Fever 2 Get to Know mini-series on multi-consist routes. And this time we're looking at boats. And as you can see, this lovely little paddle steamer is carrying not only foodstuffs, but also passengers. So it's going to be arriving at a cargo dock to offload the food and load up with some new wheat with which it can create more food and then it will shuffle along to the passenger dock and disgorge the passengers and load up a new set travelling in the other direction down the river to, as it so happens, Alexandria but that's not important right now. So it's going to make me money? Yep, a nice $33,000. Very nice indeed. Loading up with the wheat And then it will shuffle along to the passenger dock right alongside to allow these passengers to disembark and this new set of passengers to climb aboard. Okay, now just like if you've seen the previous uh, episode in this little mini-series for train stations, uh, there you have the problem. We'll deal with that in a moment. <laughs> Uh, as you saw with the train stations, if you've watched that video, if you haven't, do check it out. It'll be listed somewhere in the end card or in the description to this video. To allow a multi-consist vehicle, be it a whole train or a boat, to deliver both its cargoes, the passengers and the freight, it must actually visit the appropriate platform, or in this case dock, to allow that transfer of cargo to happen. Okay, now what you saw there was a little bit of a glitch because of the way I've set this route up. Uh, if we look at uh, my boat, it's taking the farm food exchange route, which is this. And I've told it to go to my cargo dock one here to start with, and then shuffle along to the ferry port here to, uh, to allow the passengers to disembark. And we saw a sort of ugly visual glitch there as the boat spun round for some reason to uh, allow passengers on and off and that cut through the dock. Now I'm not quite sure why I put them in this order, um, it kind of made sense at the time I think, I don't know, but if we change this order around we shouldn't experience that problem. And uh, um, uh, yes, this is something else I noticed when I was looking at uh, my train routes I think, whatever it was. You get the port, the um, the platform or point numbers on the routes up here twice. And that is simply because I've got two dialog boxes open: the the route, the single route itself, and also the line manager. If I take that out, it goes back. Yep. It was such a simple little thing, but for some reason I've spent ages wondering why that happened. Okay, now if I change these over, so it goes to the ferry port first, and then the cargo dock. And then we'll take that one out. So it goes there and then there. Again, notice that I have actually named each of these docks separately. You don't have to. Um, by default, they have the same name. Uh, would have been probably called Barclay something or other. Or is it Berkeley because it's an American name? Um, they would have had the same name. And that would work fine, just as long as you click on the right symbol for which cargo type you want to uh, to transfer but I find it a lot easier to sit to make sure that the two docks or two platforms or whatever it is are named appropriately for the cargo they're handling passengers or freight okay uh, so that's fine uh, so if we just look at the the route again in fact just to set that up as you can see it goes to both there and the other side of the, the river the other end of the river Again, it visits both the ferry port, the passenger terminal, and the dockside, which is the cargo end of this particular port. And that is all there is to setting up mixed consist ship routes. Um, how did I know you could do this? Because uh, you may well have already spotted it, but I'll... Oh, can I just say, while we're here, I don't remember seeing this in Transport Fever 1. But this water effect is gorgeous. I love it. And I am actually running on low graphics um, quality because my video card and stuff isn't quite up to the mark just yet. Hopefully when I get a bigger and better computer with bigger and better graphics, 
I'll see even more impressive visuals. There's even skulls of fish. Is it skulls? I think it is. Salmon. A salmon school, it does say that, swimming around. That is lovely. Oh, sorry, yeah, anyway, I was, what was I saying? I've completely forgot. Oh, boats, yes! <laughs> if you go to the dockyard, I'm sorry, to the, to the uh, depot, the shipyard, that's what it's called. Yep, and try and buy vehicles. You'll notice that most of the ships available to us, certainly early game, I haven't carried on through too far, so in the later game uh, there might be more differentiation between passenger and cargo vessels, but most ships here carry both passengers and cargo. And you can see here, the clue is really in the description of the vehicle, of the, of the ship. It has two compartments. Two compartments there. The Frontiac, Frontenac rather, only has one compartment and that is for passengers, so it's just cargo type there. The Klondike is a mix, whereas here for example Zoroaster and the Vandal only carry those particular types of cargo. Um, what I'm thinking is, I haven't to be honest tested this, but I suspect that the two compartments can be filled with any two combination of goods. Um, so it could be passengers or something else, or for example wood and planks. So it travels in both directions, or iron and uh, coal, if you're sending it down to a steel a steel um, refinery. Is it a steel refinery? Who knows? Steel manufacturing plant, whatever it's called. Um, so yeah, it has two compartments. Now the interesting thing here is that some ships just say all cargo types, whereas some specify here. I'm not quite sure yet what that difference is. I'm using the Wilhelm at the moment, so I've got those two compartments which are both. I wonder what would happen. Can I afford to replace them? Actually, I can with the Riggy, which uh, carries much the same. Uh, but is actually a little bit faster. Okay, uh, can I replace these vessels? I can certainly, re actually, I can probably replace both of them. Let's try this out. There we go, the, uh, manage the vehicles. And I would like to replace both of these with the riggy. There we go. And as we've seen before in my other Get to Know series, uh, the replacement happens instantly on the road or the water or in the air, I imagine, if you're looking at aeroplanes. Okay, now this vessel is described as having two compartments for all cargo types. Now quite what difference that makes to the Wilhelm is whether it will maintain this distinction between 35 passenger spaces and 35 cargo spaces that we saw on the Wilhelm. Now you see they're all mixed up here on this little ship. Well, we currently have 65 bushels of wheat or crates of wheat or whatever measure it is to take off. And the question is, will it actually fill the container up? Will it, fit, will it fill the ship up, both compartments, with wheat? Or will it still leave room for passengers? And it's looking like it's leaving room for passengers, which is excellent. So it looks as if once those two compartments have been set up, then it will keep them in position. Now this is distinction between passengers and freight. If it's two different types of freight, I'm not certain yet. That will take us a little bit more playtime to uh, to work out. Okay, so that was the that was the Rigi or Rigi, whichever vehicle it was, which has all cargo types. If I put that back to the Wilhelm. which as we can see here, has identified cargo types. We'll see if the same thing holds true. So here he is, about to turn up, and we have a really large collection of Wheat 65 to take away. So how will his hold distribution... It's not that he's actually got a hold so much, it's all left on deck, isn't it? So we'll see how this handles it.
Aha! Alright. Now, I'm not saying this is proof positive. But it does look as if when we're comparing vehicles here with multiple compartments, this will also apply, I believe, to aeroplanes, and we can see that in the other, in the third episode of this little mini-series, multi-consist air routes. So where the uh, cargo type is described as all, it looks as if it will keep them intact once they're set up, certainly between passengers and freight. Whereas on those uh, vehicles where it's identified cargo types, it looks as if, if it can fill it up with one cargo uh, type, one good, it will actually do that at the expense. So it will fill both compartments up as this Wilhelm did here at Barclay. Okay, so that is um, a little bit more than I expected to do, in fact, on multi-consist ship routes. But what I want to do to end this video is a quick look at some of the issues concerning setting up these docks with uh, multi-freight or multi-cargo uh, platforms, or in this case obviously docks. Okay, so bear with me, we'll reset this and we'll have a look at setting these docks up. Okay, so what we'll try and do here is I'll set up a, a new dock here just as an example. Um, I won't actually use it in the route, we'll just see what the issues are when it comes to setting up and configuring a dock. So as with any other uh, station type, you first off decide whether it wants to start as a passenger or a cargo harbour, and that obviously may well depend on how your game sets off or where you are uh, in, in terms of building your, your network, whether you're dealing with passengers or you're now into delivering the multiple types of freight around the map. So if we start, we often do with a passenger dock. Got that there, and as you can see, as usual, we've got the building. We've got the street connections at the back there connecting to the street or to any other type of stop, a bus stop or a train station, whichever, for example. Um, and out the front, you've got the dock and the landing, which actually allow the ships to dock and unload their cargo. OK, so the other interesting thing here is if you're setting up a cargo station. Now, I thought I understood all these sort of little dotted running lines around the stations and platforms. To mean the the routes through which the traffic goes the internal traffic of the station so here this is in this case the transfer of goods from the front of the station the platform where the ship docks outside to the street to the truck station or the train station whichever it might be but you'll notice there are no traffic lines through the cargo building itself and i think i understand i don't understand why that is i think they should be there so this might just be a vis a visual bug or there might be some other reason why urban games have have not given us those lines there on the cargo platforms but let's just set this up as a, a passenger one to start with so let's just spin that around a little so it lines up there we go so i have got my passenger station there built in and at this point i decide i want to add cargo to this so let's configure it as we would normally do and there are three things so four things we can set up here well three really a landing, a passenger or cargo dock, and a miscellaneous, a bit of road at the back. Okay, um, what you'd normally do, I think, would be to set up the building that you want to connect it to. And as I said before, notice we're not seeing those traffic lines, as I'm calling them, on the buildings here for cargo. We are seeing, however, those little blue arrows and lines. I believe they they mean they, or they represent the connections between the various modules of a dock. So if, if you are connecting to one of those, it means you do have a traffic connection. So you can transfer cargo, passengers or freight between those two elements. So let's just drop that in there, find, find it. There it goes, sit you down. Okay, and now we put in a dock. Now there are two types of ship available to us, large ships and small ships. Uh, you will need the appropriate dock to handle whichever size you want to, to put into, into this particular dock. I notice for some reason, uh, oh, yep, the, uh, got a red line there saying we can't, or well, we can, I don't, I have a suspicion that might have problems working. I'm not quite sure what the red line there means. Maybe there's no connection out that way, whatever. But there is on the small one. OK, so I might do it like that. So they run contiguously across the front of the, uh, the dockside buildings. 
or you could have it running out into the water or alongside there. Again, depending on how you want your roofs to work, in which direction the ships are coming and which, in which direction they're going, you may want to lay this out as you wish. Again, notice here the, uh, the docks have the traffic lines so we can see where the connections are, uh, both to uh, the buildings and to other docks or platforms, whatever we might have to put down. But let's put this one out out here, shall we? There we go. Okay, I'm going to leave it there for a moment and just have a check of this. Notice I've got a cargo building, I've got a cargo dock, but no cargo station here. So at the moment, this whole dock site here will only accept passengers. And we can see there's a slight difference between these two here. Notice what the passenger landing looks like and the dock or landing for the uh, cargo. It's missing something by this landing option here. This is the one thing I missed when I was first setting up my docks to test this out. I completely didn't know what this, this option here meant. This is actually where the ships connect to the actual physical infrastructure of the dock itself. And it's the dock, sorry, the landing here which provides those little tires so, so your ships don't bump into hard metal or concrete or whatever your dock is made of. So if we drop that in there we now have, did I put, oh there it is, we now have a cargo dock as well as a passenger dock. Again notice although the, the, uh, the traffic lines don't go through the cargo building my suspicion is that those blue arrows and lines do allow traffic to transfer through the entire site out to the street here. In fact, if we put down, if I put down a proper cargo station, just a little one. So that connects and you can see if I take, uh, one off. So notice that has highlighted this white shading area, both the passenger building and also a portion of the cargo building, which I, that white area indicates that we do have connection between this cargo truck stop and this cargo dock. We can improve on that if we wish by configuring our dock and adding in this extra street connection. So if I put you in there and perhaps there as well. So we actually have a more visible connection to the actual cargo dock side itself from our truck stop here. So that's it. That's how you create a multi-consist dock on your Transport Fever 2 map. Start off as usual with one or other passenger or cargo dock and then configure it to add the required elements. As far as everything is connected, as long as everything connects through to the passenger uh, building here with its street connections, you'll be fine. But the one thing to remember on here is you need both a dock, passenger, sorry, cargo or passenger, and you also need a landing to attach to it. In fact, we can put two landings on here. I wonder what that does. Let's see, shall we? So if I go into my cargo dock terminals, I have two terminals. So ships can turn up at both sides. I'm not sure we'll get a big ship in there. We shall see. So a dock can handle two landings. That's cool. That's why that's there. So thank you very much for joining me today. I hope you found this look at uh, multi-consist ship routes and dock configuration useful and helpful. If there's anything I haven't covered here, I haven't explained properly, or there's something you've seen which I've not noticed, please do drop a note into the uh, comments box below. It'd be great to hear from you, and it'll help me learn, and perhaps anybody else who's still trying to figure this game out, understand what the heck is going on. So once again, from me Ajax Post, thank you very much for joining me on this little get to know video for Transport Fever 2, and I'll see you again soon. But until then, bye bye for now.